welcome to Maths Appeal. I'm Bobby Seagull. And I'm Susan O'Kreke. This is a special Maths Appeal episode on the Maths GCSE exams. So this podcast is for students taking the GCSE, parents with students taking the GCSE and maths teachers. Our aim is to help the students be more confident, the parents be more confident in supporting the students and to support the teachers supporting the students. A lot of support. Um, it's a stressful time for everyone and hopefully everyone will feel more prepared and clear headed after this next 30 minutes. So we're two maths teachers and we see what's going on in the classroom. And that's why we've launched the podcast Maths Appeal, because we want it to be an accessible space for people to chat about maths, for students, teachers, parents or people who just want to brush up on their maths knowledge. We also want to thank you for downloading this podcast. We know that there's so many podcasts out there and we're so thankful that you've picked this one. If you are new to Maths Appeal, once you've listened to this episode, why don't you go back and check out our series one of this podcast. And if you like what you've heard... Subscribe and give us a nice rating. That would be brilliant. And if you want to find out more about us and our maths journeys or find some more useful maths learning resources, find us on Twitter and Instagram. We're at Maths Appeal. So, Susan, what can we expect from this Maths Appeal exam special episode? So, to start with, uh, we've got an overview of the Maths GCSE qualification. So, going through the basics of what it entails with also some feedback from uh, GCSE exam boards. Then we'll discuss sort of the main issues we experience as math teachers when preparing students for these exams. Also, we're going to get, give you some tips from our social media followers because everyone, most people, have had some experience of the math GCSE. Then we'll share our top five tips for preparing for the math GCSE exams. Um, and instead of the weekly puzzle, your puzzle is going to be to work out what you think are the best tips. So, right, let's get into today's episode. What is the math GCSE qualification? So the GCSE stands for, Susan? The General Certificate of Secondary Education. Perfect. And every child has to take maths. And in 2018, over 700,000 students took these exams, with 2017 being the first sitting for the new GCSE. And there are five exam boards. The five exam boards there are AQA, Pearson's Edexcel, the o- OCR, uh, Oxford Cambridge, uh, Welsh, <laughs> Bobby's favourite, um, the Welsh Board, and there's also the CCEA. This podcast is going to focus mainly on the standard GCSE, not the international GCSE s- structure. So if you're doing that, and that's the international GCSE generally uh, is taught and taken in, in um, independent and private schools. So If you are taking that, the structures that we'll be mentioning in this podcast might not necessarily work for you, but the content of the maths is very much the same. So some of our older listeners uh, might remember the old grade system of A star, A, C being a pass, and all the way down to F, G, and the U's. Yeah, that was for us, really, wasn't it? (laughs) The murky. No, 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 we want the the F, G, and the U. Oh, no, no, (laughs) the old old grading situation, yes, yes, yes. yes. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So nowadays, it's in numbers. So from a grade one all the way up to nine. And on the higher tier, uh, you can get a grade nine, technically all the way down to a three. But the key numbers are four are seen as a pass. What do you call it? Standard Standard pass, pass, yeah, yeah. yeah. And And then then a five is a a good or a strong pass. So it's kind of equivalent to the GCSE old C. The four grade was like a low C and then the five grade grade is equivalent to a high C, low B. Exactly. So, but on the foundation paper, the highest you can get is a five. Yeah. So that's the kind of key that most, all of our students are aiming for and then above. And the setup of the assessments has changed as well. So as you said, Bobby said, there's two tiers. The foundation goes from one to five and the higher goes from four to nine effectively. And then for each tier, it's the same setup. There are three papers that are set on different dates and the whole exam is worth 100% of your result. And each exam is at one hour and 30 minutes. Each exam is also 80 marks, which is a total of 240 Mm. marks. And the paper one is a non-calculator paper, but papers two and three are calculator papers. Okay, so that's kind of a key thing. You're going to need to do some general maths calculations for the non-calculator that you need to write down and make sure are clear and then you can be using your calculator and just so you know the dates for the GCSEs this year 2019 
Paper one is May the 21st, paper two is June the 6th, and paper three is the 12th of June. And if you tune into Radio 4's Today programme on the day before each of the exams, the Maths Appeal team will set a puzzle for the nation on those days. To get you ready for your examination. Exactly. So what is the course content? Um, and this is something that all the listeners and parents will definitely be familiar with. So it's split into, um, I would say, six, six areas. Yeah. We've got number... Um, counting, fractions, all that sort of stuff. Yep. Algebra, you know. All the letters. All the letters. <laughs> then we've got your ratio, which fits in also with proportion and rates of change. And this is new. This is kind of a much bigger section. It didn't used to be as kind of prevalent in the um, la- the old legacy GCSE. And this is much, there's a much more se- bigger section. In exactly. This now. And so, some tricky little questions there. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we've got our, what younger listeners will think of as shape and space, but it's called geometry and measures. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we move on to my sort of favourite areas. We've got probability. Uh, and so it's chance. Chance, yeah. And statistics. So handling data, bar charts, histograms, pie charts, all those things. And so the way these topics are sort of spread out between the papers, it's kind of different. The proportions of these topics in the foundation and the higher are different. So we just wanted to make that clear for you. So if you are doing the foundation, um, you should expect about 25% of the paper to be number another 25% to be ratio and proportion, then 20% is algebra and 15% geometry and uh, 15% stats and probability. For the higher paper, it's quite different. There's only 15% of number, there's 20% of ratio and proportion, and then there's 30% of algebra, so a Mm. lot more algebra when it comes to the higher, and then there's 20% of geometry and 15% of uh, statistics and probability. And actually what generally happens is they are sort of crossovers of there's some proportion questions that might include some algebra, there's some geometry questions that might also include algebra. So it's kind of a crossover, but that's the general outcome of like how those um, topics are spread out. And each of these topics, uh, the examiner will split them up into different types of questions. And they've got three what they call assessment objectives. So the first one is called A01. It's about using and applying standard techniques. Um, and this is worth 50% on the foundation, but 40% on the higher. Then we've got the assessment objective two. And this is about reasoning, interpreting, and communicating mathematically. So reasoning and interpreting data, essentially. So, so with these questions, there's a lot more kind of depth to it. So the is A01 is generally like one of quite standard fact questions. Yeah. And this one is much more about like pulling out the understanding exactly so that, and that this is worth 25 percent on foundation and a bit more on the higher at 30 percent and then the final one which is i guess the more of a recent emphasis in the exams is about solving so assessment objective three solving non-routine problems um sometimes in non-mathematical context so i would i would call this the problem solving yeah. type questions and that's quite high foundation is 25 percent and on the high it's 30 percent Okay. And also with those, a lot of the time it's about breaking things down into steps and kind of delving in. So with regards to these assessments, there are also, you're sometimes given uh, formulas, as in before in the old exams, there were more formulas given at the front of the paper. Now there's a lot more emphasis on memory. There's a number of formulas that you now have to remember, like the volume of a prism, the area of a trapezium, and that's for foundation and higher. And then for higher, you need to learn the quadratic equation and also the sine cosine rule. And they used to be given, but they're not given anymore. Yeah. There's also, um, we are going to make available, there's a formula sheet that gives you, an, um, from Edexcel Pearson, that kind of gives you an idea of the formulas that you should just learn and we will make that available on our twitter we'll put a link to it and we'll put it on our instagram as well at maths appeal so where do we head after the gcse so it's a good question so let's assume firstly good the good sides if you you pass you get four five and above so students that get a six or a seven and above they are sort of can consider doing the a level options in mathematics and further mathematics obviously that's what we'd love you to do but actually there's another option which isn't as well known so if you pass so i guess four or five and above yeah. but you're not really considering maths at like a level university but you want to keep doing it yeah there's something called core maths and this is really an underappreciated new um, scheme and core maths actually is really cool actually because it, i taught it last year and it's kind of amazing because it's a very applied 
course where it kind of you know when people kind of go what's the point why mm. are we doing this everything that they're, you're learning is relevant to the real world there's a, there's a whole module on financial math yeah. which is brilliant absolutely amazing because and I learned stuff as I was teaching it so I totally recommend people if you are wanting to continue maths or if you're going to do maths at university say or do another kind of qualification in geography psychology economics this is a kind of great qualification that can help you keep your maths up and think about it in an applied way. So we're big fans of uh, core maths. Uh, so let's look at the, the downside. If you don't pass, mm. you know, we have to still, as teachers, we've got to be honest, um, not all of us, you know, we might have a bad day in the exam. So if you don't pass, you do have to resit it till you're 18. Yeah. So if you're getting a grade three or below, uh, you have to come back and do your exams till 18. Yeah. So, but, but it's not hopeless. No, so they've got, they've got, they've um, got, in November, they have a resit kind of available for students to, to take. Resit exams can be taken in November. And with those, if you've been quite close, you just keep working through and you can kind of try and pass it then. And then also you have the chance again to do it in the summer. Um, it's a type of thing that when you're doing the reset, there's generally a little bit less time you're given. So it's really about you having been quite independent with your like learning when it comes to that. Yeah, perfect. So we also want to sort of share some of the key things that we found having spoke, having heard from exam boards. So what some of the key f feedback they have given, having looked at how students performed in the exams last year and in 2017. And some of the key things exam boards have said that candidates have had issues with is one, proportion and fractions. This is an area that I think across the board, across the country, students mm. perform quite poorly on. I think a big issue is the fact that it's a much larger section of the exams it wasn't the case before right. um so that's something that really you need to spend a bit of time on especially if you're doing the foundation it's a good 25 percent of uh 50 percent of the paper also reasoning and problem solving is a massive issue the, the questions like the show that questions where it's not given the answer you've got to get from they've given you the answer that you then have to make kind of clear that how they've worked it yeah, out some people look at it and think but they've already told me the answer. What, what am I proving? And many students get really confused as to how to do that. Make sure you try some of these questions and understand that it's about showing your process. And that's kind of a key thing a lot of students didn't do very well on. Also problem solving. So it's that first step, making sure you understand what the question's asking you and then doing the first step. Um, and then also another thing they said was an issue was algebra in context. So not just simplifying and solving in a kind of abstract way. It's when they attached it to, say, geometry questions. So that was the type of thing that actually was a bit of an issue. So I think that is us for the sort of overview of the maths GCSE. And we hope that was helpful especially for people that are not as familiar with the structure. And we'll try and make some of this information available to you um, so that you have one place to go to find out more about it. OK, so we are going to talk a little bit about, as maths teachers, some of the issues we have when we're working with our students when it comes to lead up to the GCSE. We'll look at the key problems that we think students have and then how we sort of tackle them. So I will start... Retrieval and recall, this is kind of a big issue. So it's kind of students thinking that they know and they've revised something, but when it comes to the detail of answering the question, they can't do it. So it's almost like learning, a, like thinking they know a song, they know all the words of the song, they go to sing it in karaoke and they don't know it. Well, that's the worst feeling, isn't it? It's really poor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's trying to work out how to kind of help with that. That's what, for me, what do you think will be like? Yeah, so it, it is almost a bit like karaoke, that like stage fright, because... Again, in the comfort of your own shower or living room, you know, you're banging out the words to Waterloo. <laughs> but in exam conditions, when you're yeah. in front of that stage, in front of the, your friends and audience, mm. that's when people find it hard to retrieve things. That's why I think you need to be like, if you think you're comfortable, make yourself like super duper comfortable so mm. that there's a leeway. So when you're under pressure. But the whole thing of overlearning, but I think it's trying to get students, I think practicing is such an important thing and also chopping and changing I think there's no point in doing a whole hour on one topic I think you need to definitely at this stage be mixing up your questions so you do some questions on fractions then you do another few questions on algebra then throw in some questions about angles so you're able because when you get the paper every different every page is different so you have to be able to ch like ch chop and change your thinking yeah, like your your mental uh, sort of filing cabinet, you can dip into your number work and then mm. dip into your algebra. And again, there are the questions that overlap. 
it might be algebra but with fractions and they'll chuck in some angles on the same question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to be able to have that dexterity. So that's kind of, for me, I think that one of the things I encourage my students to do is to try and when they're doing the revision, they do something on a section, but they quickly move on to something else. So what other things do you think do you find as an issue, Bobby? So high stakes testing and the sort of relation with exam anxiety and strategies. So high stakes is about, these are exams that are very important. It's almost like a terminal exam at the end of your course, end of your second experience, which will determine your academic fate beyond 16, you know whether A-levels and university are an option. Um, and then linked with that is the anxiety. And again, part of my research at Cambridge with my doctorate is about maths anxiety. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll give you a definition. That'd be great. Definition. Please, yeah. <laughs> Script, going, going through my mental notebook. There we go. <laughs> um, maths anxiety is a negative emotional response when dealing with maths. It can occur to uh, children as well as adults, whether in the classroom, if you're having to do a fractions question, or in the real world, if you know we're going and buying a cinnamon bun and having to work out uh, whether we're getting the right change. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, and that's the thing, that's kind of one of the things that we try to have to ward against, because these exams, for some, of these, for some students, it's the most the stressful thing they've ever done in their lives. And it's 100% exam, so you can't afford for, say, one or two or three of these exams to go badly. So it's trying to work out how best to help them understand that it's important, but they shouldn't overly stress. So what do you like? What kind of things do you do? Yeah, I think it's uh, because as a maths teacher, you obviously want your students to get that grade four, five, and above. Mm. But also, you know, as an adult, you don't want to tell them it's the end. It's not the end of the world. You know that if you don't get the grade four, you can come back in November and reuse it. So I was trying to show them you want to get that pass, that first time, really top pass. Mm. But if you don't, you, there are still options of retrieving the situation as it were but i think also it's about breaking down the whole process of 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 um doing the exam so it's taking away the stress of it where possible and seeing almost each question as a puzzle and trying to take it away from the fact that you have to do incredibly well to to pass because actually the more relaxed you are the better your performance will be in general and that will yeah again if you're relaxed it reduces that anxiety that sort of stage fright yeah, yeah. So I think that's I think, a massive issue. I think what we I think we we touched on two other things that we were going to sort of speak about, which is like the issue regarding problem solving and numeracy. Yeah. Um. But that's like I think it's about practice of revision of that, and then getting students prepared for exams. So like recall, and then I think exam pressure is the two of the key things I think are an issue for both of us. And then, so you mentioned numeracy practice. So what do you mean by that? So it's things like just making sure students have got their basics, their basic number facts are up to speed. So they like understand about square and cube numbers. They also know the angle facts. They also know the formulas. So if you have all these things in your memory, it's much easier to try the questions as opposed to thinking, oh my goodness. Like for working memory, when you see a question that has about, about angles, you should be thinking, oh, I know the angle facts. What ones am I using? As opposed to you see a question about, uh, about angles and you go, oh, I can't remember what the angle facts are. And you start stressing about that as opposed to thinking about what the question's about. So getting your like number and basic maths facts so sorted will really help you when you go into the exam. Particularly for the non-calculator. Of course, it's important for the calculator paper as well, mm -hmm. but for the non-calculator, you need to be very secure on those things. Like if you see the number 45, you're thinking, oh, is this to do with a triangle so just making sure that those numbers are sort of readily available. Indeed, indeed. And what about you? Um, I would say, with my with my higher students, generally higher paper students, I, I'm I'm normally confident they can get that. And I'm often trying to get them to access the the more challenging sort of grade eight plus worded questions. But with my my foundation students often they have a lack of confidence in their numeracy, and that's why sometimes they think, oh, they can't do maths. Mm. So with them, often again, uh, when we talk on resources later on, is trying to get them to be more confident with the basic numeracy skills. And I might do, and we'll mention it later, Corbett. Mm -hmm. I do like a five-a-day quick starter where they're doing numeracy type questions. They're not necessarily GCSE questions, but it gets their mind warmed up to think about, ah, how do I do multiplication? Mm -hmm. How do I do simple bit of algebraic manipulation? So it's getting them to be confident at the basics. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. The more practice, the better, really. And then the final one we have is about problem solving. And the way I'd call this is that it is essentially the same maths as we've had before, mm -hmm. but these are questions in a worded format where the question is not necessarily directly apparent and you've got to almost be like an like investigator, like a Sherlock Holmes, mm -hmm. and work out what the question is trying to ask you. And this is, again, 
a much higher component than new exams. Yeah. Also, I find a lot of students, especially students who are doing the foundation, they've got they can be kind of um, really tripped up by how wordy some of the questions can be, and because maybe they don't feel confident looking at all the words, they kind of give up before they keep, before they try. And I think that's something that I try and encourage students to do is to break down the question, what's it asking, and then you think not what's the overall answer, what's step one. What can I work out from the information that I'm given? And then just write that down. Then what else can you work out? Write that down. And also an ind- a massive indicator to help with that is how many marks is that question? If that question is four marks, you need to have worked out at least four things. Exactly. If that question is five marks, you need to work out at least five, five things. So it's just thinking about the problem in steps as opposed to one big problem that you cannot manage. And that's something to kind of like practice, I think. Yeah, and then again... Resilience is quite an important word for this because even if you don't get to the final answer, be strong enough mentally to just keep on having a goal. So you might pick up a couple of marks or three marks. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not necessarily going to get the full four, but because that's the aim. It sounds really awful, but one mark that gets you over the the level of your level four, your level five, or your level nine, one mark can make quite a big difference. So never think it's not worth it. Always write something down. So, right, so there, there are kind of key issues, but we hope that's given you a bit of an idea and some, some ideas on how to kind of go forward and feel a bit more confident going into the exam because it's not, it's not the be-all and end-all. It's important, yes, yes, but, you know, it's not the be-all and end-all. So what kind of, what are your favourite resources? I thought we'd sort of share a couple. I've got two, you've got two. Do you want to start? Yes, so my first one is something perhaps you've not heard of, although you may have heard. So have anyone heard of the murderous maths books? Have you heard of Horrible Histories before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a sort of equivalent called Murderous Maths Mm -hmm. by an author called Kiartan Poskit. And on his site, um, so he's he's always like about trying to make maths really fun and looks at the histories and biographies of people, really quirky stories. But uh, on his site, he has got, looks at the four sort of key areas, number, algebra, data. And it's really quick, easy, almost like two pages of A4 printout Mm -hmm. has what he thinks are the the most common mistakes that people make. So if you're sort of someone that feels a bit underconfident, maybe you might be a four, sort of five grade student, or even someone that's a seven and eight and just wants to make sure they get their sort of basics done. Yeah. He's got this sort of cheat sheet of common mistakes on oh. his site. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I'm not, I've not heard about him. That's great. Um, one of my favourites, you mentioned it earlier, Bobby, is Corbett Maths. I yeah. think it's incredible. They have... Um, so some of the key things they have, they've got five a day, which is a mixture of five questions that vary. And literally, they've got calendar year that you can kind of pick. There's also topics. So if you're like, I want to practice angle rules, you can go on. There's worksheets. With the worksheets, there's answers. There's also exam style questions. Plus there are videos. The most important thing for me is the whole idea that there's videos. So if you're not sure about something, watch the video and it breaks it down for you. So it's effectively like having a tutor but not having to pay. And there's also great past papers on there with worked examples and solutions. So again, do questions. Look at the answer. The answer will tell you whether you've got it right or wrong. Exactly. That's really important. So Corbett Maths is one of my absolute favorites. Yeah, I, I'll have to agree. Corbett's absolutely brilliant. A new resource, so my second one, is something that's not been around for very long, but it's uh, on the BBC Teach website. Sure. And it's called The Maths Show. So we have you heard of Matt Parker? Oh, yes. Yes, Stand Up yeah. Maths. Yeah. Stand Up Maths. So he's a former maths teacher, now a sort of stand-up comedian. Brilliant. But about maths. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he's had a really great book called Humble Pie. Oh, I've uh, heard good things yeah, about so, this. Yeah, uh, brilliant. Uh, about like mathematical mistakes mm-hmm. uh, uh, that cause sort of great issues in the world. But have, have a check. Brilliant book. It's called Humble Pie. But anyway, on the BBC site, he's got a series of videos where he covers uh, issues like fractions, uh, some algebra, some number work. And it's just, uh, if you're sort of getting bored of your sort of standard routine mm-hmm. of revision watch those videos just a way of livening up your oh, revision that's nice a little bit of inspiration a reminder of why you're doing it yeah oh brilliant brilliant okay that's great and then one maths bot again it's a great website it's completely free there's loads of things like manipulatives on there that you want to if you want to play around with stuff but one of the key things for revision i think is great they've got retrieval practice so it's like how we were talking about the whole recall retrieval it's getting students mixed mixed questions what like what are the answers almost quick fire gives you answers straight away you can either do the same type of question again and again um or you can jazz it up so what's great is the fact it's free and it gives you instant feedback as well it's interactive so at maths bot i'd totally recommend it perfect so if you have any more resources please do again tweet us at maths appeal or insta us as well we put a survey on twitter asking people what they thought the best advice is for people doing their gcses so the options we gave 
which, you know, kind of controversial, but also I think quite useful. Do practice papers, show you're working out, relax, you can resit, or <laughs> another. So they're the four options we gave. What do you think won, Bobby? I assume past papers. Past papers won quite considerably with 67%. Yeah. Uh, we got 22% that said show you're working out, which is a great, it's great advice, you definitely yeah. should. Uh, 8% of people says, said, relax, relax, you can resit, <laughs> which is a part, I think it was a bit of a joke kind of yeah. suggestion, but at the same time, it's, it's worth it. the perspective, yeah. Exactly. And then others, so we quite a few, so about th- sort of 3% gave other advice. And some of the things that people said, I thought I would share, as a maths lock said, do pass papers, but then find the topics from a practice paper that you struggle on, work through those with online resources and do the, do the next pass paper. Test, find, fix, test, cycle. That's Ooh. great. Nice and clear kind of suggestion on how yeah. to revise. Um, and Canadian Cat, great name, <laughs> said, uh, <Meow. laughs> study the learning materials. Do not practice the past papers because that's all you'll do. So controversial. Ooh. They don't think that past papers. So again, I think it's finding out what fits best with you as a student and what kind of revision helps. But the key thing really is to get some practice in. Exactly. And we actually had lots of response on an Instagram story. That's where the kids are hanging out these days. God, you're so damn good, <laughs> One of which said, ask Mr. Seagull. And that's not a legitimate revision you tip. You can't do that in the no, exam. No, you can't do that. I mean, I could do sort of binary eye signals. But you can't go in the exam. Bro. Yeah, you can't. That's cheating, yeah. isn't it? No. But one, one tip I quite liked from uh, Sophie McKay on Instagram, she said was, read the actual question stated. Oh, do you know how many people throw away marks by not answering the right question? Because they think, oh, it's on quadratic, it's on, it's, it's, uh, solve the, um, it's use the quadratic formula yeah. and they don't actually read what the question's asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't throw away marks, no. read the question. So we're going to give you our five top tips. So we've spoken a bit, we've talk- put together kind of and thought about us as teachers, what we've seen from our students, also having spoken to kind of parents. What do we believe, so that's me and Bobby, believe are the top five things that you should be sort of thinking, getting ready for doing the exam. And so the first one we kind of said was, for revision, revise the areas you struggle with. A lot of the time people stay safe and practice things they know they can do well. That's a waste of your time. If you str- if you practice the things you don't know, that's where you're going to pick up more marks. Okay, so move out of your comfort zone. Second one we said was spend time committing these key facts and formulae to memory. Uh, I often advise my students stick up the formula sheet on the wall because you're going to have to memorize it at some stage. So the more you can be exposed to it, the better. Um, and also don't assume, so when you're doing the exam, when you're in the exam hall, don't assume the exam, uh, the questions at the end of the paper are too difficult. Go all the way through. You might have found question four difficult, but question five might be easy. You might be thinking because we're now at question number 22, you can't do it. That's not true. Do all of the questions. Have a go and sort of make sure you write something down. Uh, tip four, we'd say look after your mind and the body before the exams. Again, simple things like eat well. Drink lots of water, try and sleep well. Of course, it's a stressful period, but make sure that you're physically ready to do the exam. And the last one we, th- we, th- we really think is important is try to relax. Um, your memory works better, you problem solve better when you're in a positive frame of mind and you're able to, th- to think. And a lot of the time, if you're overly stressed, you're not able to do that. So I know it's a difficult thing and you might think, what are you saying? Relax. But the whole point is, if you can, you, can, you probably will perform better. That's it from us. Thanks again for downloading this GCSE Maths Exam special episode of Maths Appeal. And if you want to find out more about how Bobby and I teach some of the maths topics we've mentioned, uh, we recommend that you go back and have a listen to some of the episodes of Series 1. And if you're a parent and you've enjoyed listening today and you want to re-engage your brain with maths, um, we'd recommend you go to the National Numeracy website and look out for their Essentials Challenge. And this really just tests how much of the sort of basics of maths that you've got up to scratch. So we plan to be back with Series 2 of Maths Appeal later in the year, so watch this space. And remember, until then, maths is your friend. Your best friend. The best of friends. You've been listening to Maths Appeal with me, Bobby Seagull and Susan Okereke. And the music was composed by Kelly Okereke and the image designed by Calix Davis. And the producer is the absolutely wonderful... Wonderful. Jennifer Nelson. (laughs) 